Welcome to None Dare Call It Ordinary, the podcast that digs into the unusual, unorthodox, and downright unsettling beliefs under the depths of the internet and the heights of paranoia. I'm your host, Dylan, and with me is the meretricious Brent. Ooh, can you uh, enlighten me on what that means? It means using false flashy charm. <laughs> In that case, what are we talking about today, Dylan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. No, no, no. Yes, yes, uh, Brett, very charming, but it's all lies. He's full of lies. But he did ask what we are talking about today, and we are still talking about James W. Lee and his book, The One World Tartarians, The Greatest Civilization Ever to Be Erased from History. And we only got as far as the intro deduction, mm-hmm. not introduction, intro deduction, very important. So we're going to start really getting into who were the Tartarians? Who were they? And we're going to start the start by talking about their biology, because you might be under the impression that Tartarians were just regular folks like you and me, but you would be wrong. Hmm. Their biology was very different than our own. Lots of DNA repair, I assume. Oh, that's probably. I mean, they had all sorts of airships and whatever, so they probably were repairing their own DNA. First of all, they were giants with an average height of 10 feet. Civilizations even more ancient than the Tartarians were even taller. Quote, the heights of the civilizations before them averaged 12 feet, 50 feet, two plus miles, etc. Wow. To put that in perspective, the tallest building in the world right now is the One World Trade Center. And that is only a third of a mile tall. So we got to imagine folks that are six One World Trade Centers high. That's how tall we're talking. And that's just the average. Well, fi- I think it's finally good. We're finally we're getting the um, discovering the elusive origins of the Mile High Club, I guess. That's, yes. Uh, wow. You don't need they didn't even need airplanes to, to get that to get that club for some people. Not us, of course. Yeah. For some people is a badge of honor. To be a member of the Mile High Club, but for them, since two since two plus is the average, that's probably for the losers. Oh, yeah. you're only you're only a mile tall. We're two miles. We're right. in the two mile high club. It's exactly. much more impressive. But despite this increased height, that didn't mean they were eating a lot more than we do. In fact, they didn't eat at all because they were breatharians. <sighs> Wow, throwback. Throwback wow. indeed. It's been a while. I, I actually would think it'd be harder to breathe where the, you know, the oxygen is a little thinner up there and the and the sky high and you know, miles in the air. You know, that's a really good point. I do know, I don't know what the time scale is. I do know back in the day there was more oxygen oh, yeah. in the atmosphere. That's so right. maybe that's what allowed such impressive height. Yeah, maybe. Like the insects. But that's speculation. Let's get back to the facts. Specifically, Tartarian subsisted on the ether spelled with an A. So, you know, it's fancy. But what what exactly is ether? Lee has a very helpful description, quote, the ether is thought to be the very fabric of the space time continuum that some would associate with electrons, the wind, the Holy Spirit, the atmosphere and the gases in the atmosphere, such as oxygen, nitrogen and hydrogen. But right after this description, Lee asks where they grew their food since they had no available farmland. So I don't know if this is a rhetorical ploy. So you got to just do your hashtag research on that one. I don't know what the answer is. I also like, you know, how they lived off the atmosphere and also separately off of the gases in the atmosphere. So that's nice. And we also often forget about the much overlooked greenhouse gas, the Holy Spirit. Yes, that is so. definitely <laughs> you want to be careful with the Holy Spirit. It can definitely it can make things happen and get out of hand. But yeah, it's kind of like, you know, it's a you know, I ate I ate one half of the apple. I ate another half of the apple and I also ate the whole apple. So I ate three things. That's kind of what's going on here. And they didn't eat. So they also didn't piss or shit mm. and thus had no toilets or sewer systems or waste treatment plants. Uh, I mean, thank God, because can you imagine the horrific disaster of 20 ton piles of shit falling from the sky onto the those short, you know, 10 foot tall giant Tartarians? It would be like the scenes at Idiocracy where they have those giant garbage, but that would just be <laughs> one day. That would be that's how you would know they were technologically advanced if they could deal with all that. But enough about their weird old biology. Let's talk. Let's get into the history, kind of where they were and what happened. Where did they go? While the Tartarians started in northern Asia, they went on to not only control North America, as we said in the last episode, 
but in fact, all of the Northern Hemisphere. Sadly, she befell severe natural disasters, including earthquakes, volcanoes, and, quote, liquefaction mud flood events. But she was also under siege by many enemies who attacked her with weather manipulation and directed energy weapons. Again, it's unclear here if the volcanoes and earthquakes were caused by the weather manipulation or if they were just freebies. Like they were like, all right, we can cause a thunderstorm. We can cause a blizzard. Um, and we can't, but we can't cause the earthquakes. Oh, it, it just it happened anyway. So, you know, it's kind of a freebie, kind of convenient. Why was the New World Order so upset with Tartaria? Again, that's the main enemy here is the New World Order run by the Romanovs. They were angry because they told time wrong, being the Tartarians. The Tartarians used a moon calendar instead of the, quote, Roman Catholic Sun Gregorian calendar, which replaced the moon calendar in 1582. Lee says in the very next sentence that the Tartarians were wiped out in the 19th century. So was this a situation where the New World Order changed to the sun calendar, but the Tartarians defiantly held on to the moon calendar, kind of like how the U.S. is just really holding on to those imperial units and it just made everyone upset? Well, the face on Mars is, is a, you know, it's like the face of a clock. So I try to mm. try to follow you know, Mars it's calendar. Like, oh, personally, so. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a sundial, but with the yeah. face, it's like, oh, I'm. I'm half it's 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 already at half face. I got to go. I'm late. The downfall of Tartaria began in the middle of the 19th century when Moscow Tartary was conquered by those dastardly Romanovs. Oh, We're going to keep talking about them. Those guys. It was Moscow Tartary that spanned, quote, the Urals, Siberia, Central Asia, the Far East, Alaska and North America. At this time, Alaska wasn't part of North America, I guess. So okay. it, it was separate. This makes sense of Lee's very unorthodox claim that American Indians were actually the descendants of Mongolian Tartarians. Mm. Once the Romanovs sacked the Tartarians, the American Tartarians were left without a central authority and thus capable of being picked off by the Europeans from the Atlantic coast. So it's kind of like a Roman Empire scenario where once the kind of central bureaucracy of the Roman Empire collapses, all of these outlying places that were initially, you know, under their auspices fell to the barbarians, the right? Goths and the Visigoths and all those Goths. Mm -hmm. It's kind of it's a similar thing here where they were fancy. They were like Rome, but then they lose that central infrastructure and then they kind of degraded to where they, they were. But you may ask, I thought Tartaria was crushed in the 19th century. So how can that coincide with the American Revolution and all that? Because this seems to suggest that Americans or Europeans during the America time were able to fight off these American Tartarians. And it's simple because they were also somehow crushed in the middle of the 18th century. They're both true. Oh. Just compare the following two quotes within paragraphs of each other. First quote, Moscow Tartary was conquered by the Romanovs in the middle of the 19th century. OK, that's what we've seen here. But here's the next quote. The conflict between Moscow Tartary and Romanov Russia, originally smaller in size, ended in the second half of the 18th century. <laughs> and this is helpful because Lee could just appeal to whichever date is convenient yeah. at any given time. Contradictions, very handy. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like someone's nitpicking it. It's, it's what's a few hundred years in difference. Yeah, in I mean, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, also, you know, with all this um, mention of Tartary, for some reason Tartary just reminds me of like some sort of great British bake off thing they're going to be making that it sounds delicious <laughs> so if you want to watch the show yeah, which is Prue on again, want, Prue is wants nice. for the technical who wants you to make a finished tartary Ooh. so we've sorted this out tartary was conquered both in the middle of the 19th and 18th century somehow both are true it's amazing and with that we can understand how the freemason adam weishaupt established the usa on may 1st 1776 then in 1816, Alaska, Oregon, and Washington were given to the Romanovs, while the USA got the rest of North America. Sadly, like the tales of residential schools that were that are coming up more in the consciousness recently with all the discoveries of mass graves, this involved a cruel cultural genocide. Quote, up until now, the native Russian population of America is being persistently forced to forget their language and their past. All of this, the whole idea that American Indians were actually Tartarians and that there was actually like a full blown Tartarian civilization in North America before the Europeans came explains a lot. It explains away some tricky problems with American architecture, quote, 
Since Moors were the Tartarians, according to the Gothic architecture all over the world, but mainly in the Americas, this means that modern-day Europeans did not build any of these Greco-Roman-slash-Gothic structures in Old World America, because a previous advanced American civilization called Moors, Moors and Berber Indians, India, all one and the same people, because they are both the Khmer, Khan, Kem, Shem, Kam, Ham, Sam, I Am people from India Superior that civilized the world. In this post is a map of India Superior in the Americas. This map is very significant because it demonstrates that the Americas is Asia Major, Asia Proper, aka the Orient, the East. If you couldn't follow all that, it turns out that the United States is the real Far East. Oh. It's not China or Japan. It's the U.S. The Sam I Am peoples of India. I like that. Yeah, the, the Sam I Am people. Uh, also, America is apparently Atlantis, oh. the origin of ancient Egyptian civilization, okay. and the true birthplace of all civilizations. So America is underwater then? I mean, I mean, with climate change at some point, I guess that's going to be true, but. Yeah, because time is time is circular is a uh, circular. Oh, yeah. Time is cyclical. Uh, so, yeah. So we're actually we're phasing into our Atlantis period. Ah. And then the whole thing is just going to kind of rewind. Once the New World Order got a hold of the Americas, they systematically wiped out buffaloes, cows and wild horses. To be clear, I don't mean something boring like hunting these animals to extinction. They literally, quote, organize the massacre of these animals. I mean, exactly. As we know, the New World Order is in control of America to this very day. And we definitely, definitely don't have cows around. No one eats beef at all in this country. No, never have. It's very hard to find. We're all vegans here. No, actually, I'm pretty sure Beyond Meat is really just one of the tentacles of the NWO. So let's be yeah, that's, uh, they kill be They honest. kill all the cows, force you to eat this fake Franken food. Uh, and then I, I, don't, I don't know what happens. No one, no one feels sorry for the peas, you know? I mean, those poor peas. Yeah. All that protein. Yeah, personally, out of their personally, I prefer, I think we should live in a world with world peas. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's getting late. Also. Since the Tartarians were so technologically advanced, they already had assembly lines churning out electric cars. <laughs> Thankfully, Damn. though, the NWO put a stop to that and started pumping out gasoline cars instead. So just are we talking just, you know, boring old electric cars like we have today? I, I would expect that the Tartarians would have, you know, church organ powered electric cars or something. <laughs> I, that's what I that's, thought, too. Yeah. I think it's a system where the ch they, they want to centralize church organ Oh, power plant. Sense. Yeah. So that you don't have to, you know, it's you can like probably plug in your electric you cars to the church. Like you can go in there, plug it in. Yeah. To like the altar. Yeah. So like, okay. you know, at your you'll have a charging station. That's just a big radio. Uh, and that's what's charging your car. Because who who wants to play an organ at 6 a.m. when you're driving to, that's you know, your point. job yeah. at McDonald's? Yeah. No one wants to do that. On top of all this real and true history, we learned something about our friends in the southern U.S. And I just have to let you know. We're going to lot. We're going to learn a lot more about the South <sighs> in the U.S. Oh, and it might not be good, but we get a little tidbit here. Quote in the South where there had never been segregation slaves or quote black subordination before wow. the carnage was equally total. What the official history reports as a quote reconciliation between the North and South after the Civil War never existed. The massacre was necessary so that the NWO could take over all the lands and retell the history, concealing the destruction and remitting it to a remote past. Legends like Mark Twain then would emerge signing novels that would describe a racism non-existent through the eyes of Tom Sawyer and beautiful, real balloon rides in the adventures of Huckleberry <laughs> Finn. So in short, racism non-existent. Balloon rides, very real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think once you've already made it clear as an author, you promote that, you know, anti-Semitism is uh, made up and Hitler and thus the Holocaust is all fake. I think it's just a short leap until you say, you know, racism isn't even real and American Civil War yeah, happened. I don't stuff. think someone who thinks Hitler is is not real is going to be marching in any civil rights marches right. anytime soon. <laughs> I, I don't think that's happening. Lee also has some choice words for those of us triggered by Confederate statues and Ooh, flags. Oh boy, here Quote. we go. Today we see the NWO taking down all Confederate flags allegedly created from the Civil War days. 
and this is true because it is dudes and like NWO outfits who are doing all this. The Confederate battle flag was just the World Federation flag of our previous civilization and, until today, is the emblem of the present Russian Navy, the Novorossiya flag. The colors of the actual Russian Federation flag and the state symbols of many other countries, including the flag of a false empire manufactured on an island called United Kingdom that stole us everything, including world history. He sure loves Russia. He talks about it a bunch. He doesn't love the Romanovs, though. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, I think there's there's a kind of a mix here. I'm pretty sure, you know, hillbillies in the South that like have a bunch of Confederate flags are not thinking that it's, you know, an old um, Russian Navy flag or whatever. And I don't think that's what they mean. I I think that's true. I think, you know, because I mean, really, if you really believe this, those are the folks you should be talking to. (laughs) I mean, you know, yeah, seriously. So like if I thought the Confederate flag actually expressed the ideas of peace on Earth and the reign of civil rights. I would want to talk to the main Confederate flag people and say, look, you don't know what that means, you know? And so that's what Lee should be As doing. Not talking to the to Capitol. Us. Please stop. Y- yeah, that's, you know, there's so many other better things you could be doing. You know, still, this is a little bit, you know, this is kind of vague. You know, who is really who are the current actors who are the current outcroppings of the NWO who are doing all this dastardly anti-Confederate stuff? Quote. The NWO would rewrite history, inventing that it had been just a struggle between whites and blacks, although they were thus creating the first roots of racism that they would nurture to launch future racial wars fostered in the 1960s. And again, now through Antifa, Black Lives Matter and Black Panthers. In reality, the leaders of the northern NWO of the so-called Union Army were the first to segregate around 180,000 black soldiers in regiments headed only by white men. And, you know, that last part is true. It's not the it's not the only segregation, of course. But I really like here that they did this in the 60s. And again, now. So now. So, you know, when he wrote this book, like 2017, I don't think the Black Panthers were a huge force. No. In 2017. Oh, also um, a side note here. This is totally like not a major point, but um, America was originally Muslim. Oh, uh, in case okay. in case you weren't. And if you want proof, the proof is very simple. Just look at all the cities and towns named Mecca or Medina. Boom. Proof. Why else would they be named that? Also, American Indian tribal names are also Islamic, too. Yeah. You know, the one thing I do know for certain and reading different books on First Nations people of North America is that all of the different tribes for sure practice one monotheistic religion. That's yes. There's all they're all the same, really. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. They're yeah, I, identical. I mean, just like now, like everyone in America has the exact same religion. Uh, it's quite amazing. One th- one like short thing, because I was I was really intrigued. Some of these because he's like there's Mecca, Ohio, Mecca, Idaho. Some of them were actually um, typos. Oh, <laughs> uh, so it turns out like there is I can't I didn't write it down for some reason, but it was like someone called it like I'm looking for Mecca Falls and someone on some forum was like, no, it's like Macau Falls or something <laughs> like that. Um, but it is interesting how. The first country to recognize American independence was Morocco, Mm. was an Islamic country. So Mm. there was actually a lot of there was a lot of warm feelings between the United States and various kind of Muslim countries. And so a lot of these names happened kind of late 18th, late 19th, early 20th century. Um, And a lot of times they were just looking for cool words. Yeah. And, you know, people were pretty there wasn't the kind of Islamophobia that we see today. And so that that's that's the explanation. (laughs) We wanted cool words. Right. Anyway, uh, we've been dealing mostly with recent history so far. Where do the Tartarians come from in the way back? Well, Lee explains that Tartaria was, quote, quite possibly founded by Noah's sons. Oh, if you've been having trouble keeping up. With this onslaught of truth. Yeah. Truth bombs that Lee is dropping. Here is a summary provided by Alexander Scott Withers from his book, Chronicles of Border Warfare. Quote, Tartarian Native Americans are considered Hebrew Israelites. It's very possible that the true Hebrew Israelites are Scythian Tartarian based on older maps as reference when Tartar, Scythia, encompassed all of Russia, parts of Europe and Asia. Seems like this is an open secret. 
within the Native American community. <laughs> open secret. I'm getting major Mormon vibes. I yes. Guess. Yeah. yeah, I think this is something you're going to talk about later about how the Garden of Eden or like the early Bible stuff actually happened in North America, which mm-hmm. is kind of very similar. All right. Continuing this quote, the summary. More than one nation in America had Scythian or Tartarian extraction. Native Americans were trafficked to other parts of the globe, including China. Native Americans resemble that of Scythians, Tartars, and Samoyed people. Continent of Brazil was peopled by Carthaginians and Israelites, Israelites meaning people of the north, a.k.a. Scythians. Native American descendants were possessed of an extraordinary divine spirit by which they foretold future events, and that this was transmitted to their offspring, provided they obeyed the sacred laws annexed to it. You would think if the native peoples had the power of prophecy at their disposal, they would have seen the total genocide heading their way by by our ancestors. Yeah, I, I definitely uh, I think don't let them on the shore. No. Would be the that would be the <laughs> yeah. main prophecy I would be focusing on. Yeah, stop it right away. Now let's top all this off, all this true history of Tartaria with some history of science. Quote: Ooh. Absolutely nothing was invented or discovered by quote scientists and intellectuals. Of the 19th and 20th century. So wow, what a claim. Yeah. So from 1800 to 1999. Dark ages. Nothing was invented or discovered. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. It was all stolen, I guess, from the Tartarians. Now we're going to take a little bit of a sidetrack here by talking about China, because one thing that could potentially muck up the all this work, uh, all this stuff on Lee's account is the presence of millennia of Chinese history, which is not at all compatible with any of this stuff that Lee is talking about. And Lee has a very simple explanation. Chinese history sucks. They don't know what they're doing. Let's start with all those millennia of Chinese history. In fact, all supposed Chinese history up to the 15th century was really European and Byzantine history. Lee is like a history hijacker and not a fan of this. Yeah, it's like all this Rude. great cool stuff that China did. Nope, that was really European. Nope. I'm, I'm just taking it. It's it's ours. What happened was that the Tartarians brought these stories of European development and exciting European history with them to China in the 15th century. And by the 17th century, the Chinese people just kind of forgot they oh. were histories of Europe. And instead were like, yo, yeah, these are Chinese history. They just <laughs> forgot. And they're like, yeah, I, I guess it's about us. So how do we fight all this misinformation? Simple. Quote, we need our own institutions and scholars that are not compromised by oaths and by Western academics. Well, I'm also pretty sure Lee wouldn't trust oaths by Eastern academics as well. So Mm. we can just cover that. And and I guess we'll just have to take Lee as the only authoritative source here on all of these dates. Yeah, Lee and uh, and maybe LaRouche. uh, But we haven't uh, we haven't run into him explicitly. Uh, I think Lee would be okay with Eastern academics as long as they were the far Eastern Tartarians of North America, because those are the real Eastern academics. Let's talk about Tartarian culture. Brent, I think, has more to say about that. That's right. So we're all familiar with the culture war here in the United States Corporation, but I bet most of us aren't too terribly familiar with the Tartarian culture war. So that's something new for everybody. Yeah, literally never heard of it in my entire life (laughs) until right now. (laughs) Were they allowed to say Merry Christmas? That's unfortunately never addressed. Um, But Lee does begin this chapter with four pages of pictures of kings of Tartaria, Tartarian Russian royalty, and of course the quote, elegant and beautiful women of the Tartary. Oh, I guess, I guess that's good. And this very, so I, I, I love this, this very equal mm-hmm. society where women can't vote and there's no women leaders and they're just the elegant and beautiful. That's their only role here. But also I think this goes both ways because I'm sure the men of Tartaria were equally as elegant and beautiful as the women. So yeah. I don't like this. I don't like this one bit. So after the barrage of images, Lee wants to discuss the Moors saying, quote, Author and historian Chancellor Williams said, quote, the original Moors, like the original Egyptians, were black Africans. True. Napoleon's soldiers used the Sphinx nose in Egypt as target practice as well. He points out that Tony Browder assembled a 225 page book containing six drawings from the years between 1698 to 1798 and, quote, are the only current evidence available which shows the progression of the nose destruction Man, that is a different time when you can look at something as cool as the sphinx and go i'm gonna shoot it in the face and it wasn't just statue noses that the nwo hated with the passion quote 
The NWO Romanov dynasties would often deface statues of past monarchs in order to erase or diminish their legacy. In these cases, the removal of the nose would be accompanied by other more extensive facial disfigurements. Fucked up. And I, I, I love how those soldiers shooting at the Sphinx's nose was part of some elaborate NWO Romanov plot. It wasn't just some bored jackass who's like, I bet I can hit that thing in the nose. So Lee is now going to direct our attention to another huge NWO lie. This is his words. The transatlantic, the transatlantic slave trade out of Africa. Ah. <laughs> so, you know, what could, what could possibly go wrong in this section? Oh, nothing. Oh, Absolutely nothing. This is going to be great and wholesome. <laughs> he starts, quote, so the story goes. <laughs> uh, dot, dot, dot. <sighs> Some 12.5 million Africans were taken from their homes and forced aboard slave ships that were destined for the new world. About 10.7 million people survived the horrors of the Middle Passage between 1526 and 1866, only to end up in bondage on sugar, rice, cotton, and tobacco plantations throughout the Americas and the Caribbean. The transatlantic slave trade is the largest forced migration in history. What a story, am I right? Yeah, a very true story. Yeah, a very actual real thing that happened. Well, it's called a story for a reason because, you know what, guys, it's fictional, apparently, because, oh. um, yeah, according to Lee, quote, black people are indigenous to the Americas. You know what? Honestly, though, I, I hope so. That yeah. would be great. Be that nice. would be great if slavery never happened. So uh, why stop there? Right. Because Lee's got to keep going. Quote, black Native Americans are not a result of the so-called red Indian mixing with slaves. The so-called red Indian comes from mixing with the European co colonists and the Asians that were in America before Columbus. Lee says that the first Native Americans were actually Mongolian Tartarians. So were all the Mongolian Tartarians black? Because I thought, you know, he talked a lot about the medieval depictions of Tartarian kings as white dudes. Yeah. Like those were the accurate depictions. But now it seems like he's saying they're black, like Native Americans are black or it's hard to even use his language because it's so disgusting. But also, <laughs> yeah, it's really tough. The Asians that were in America before Columbus, are they also Tartarians? So it's very, even in his kind of like racist fever dream, <laughs> it's hard to keep, it's hard to keep track of all this. So he, he brings up a quote, European anthropologist, Melvin uh, Herskovitz, who is one of the creators of the out of Africa theory. Um, honestly, at this point, I'm just happy he's a European anthropologist and not a Jesuit anthropologist. Yeah, but you, you know, know what? I he mean, could still on. be as a Freemason that's anthropologist. True. He could be. I think he would have led with that, but that's fine. The problem Lee gives with Herskovitz is that he, quote, never had any historical, archaeological, or anthropological proof that black people of the Americas were derived from West or or and North Africa. Herskovitz claims more than 10 million African slaves were brought over to America, but he says that, quote, according to the National Archives of Spain and Smithsonian records, there was no evidence to prove 70,000 ships with black Africans ever sailed to the Americas. So I suspect what Yikes. Lee means here is that he couldn't find the evidence that this happened, because I don't think the Smithsonian is actually proclaiming that there's no evidence for the transatlantic slave trade. No. I believe this is a bad inference Lee himself is making. So I, I don't think we should denigrate. Just use Wikipedia. Really. Yeah, I, find yeah, it right there. Really. Lee has to get some more film history writing in this book um, saying, quote, as a result, Melville's work has been fragmented and used as propaganda by writers like Harold Corlander and Alex Haley which further perpetuated the myth of the transatlantic slave trade through the hit movie Roots. Denigrating Roots, denigrating LeVar Burton, Aww. and the and the incredible acting of O.J. Simpson. I oh, won't have on. it on yeah. this podcast. No one talks about his acting. He was good. Melville carried out the teachings of his mentor, Franz Bose, to make the original copper color races of the Americas inferior and the European presence superior. Before this time, blacks coming from Africa through the transatlantic slave trade story never existed. When you're talking about folks, don't don't say they're like copper colored or like yeah. chocolate colored. Just say, <laughs> just say what they are. They're black. Right. They're white. They're Hispanic. Yeah. They're Asian. Right. You don't got to. It's gross. Yeah, it just don't gross. do it. Come on. 
It's like it shows you're obsessing so much on it. Like, please just stop. God, like, just... I want to <laughs> capture the exact color of your your skin. <laughs> Why? We're never doing that with white people. We're never <laughs> like the the marble colored <laughs> person, <laughs> the alabaster colored person. We're never doing that. So the big the biggest issue Lee has with this whole transatlantic slave trade hoax isn't the slavery bit. It's really the whole part with the ships and the transport, because he says the black people were absolutely not brought here on ships. Quote, instead, they were enslaved right here on their own lands. Yeah, I suspect the slavery part is more important. Yeah, it is. Than the ship part. But he's going to go. He's going to be just go right into the ships here. So so then so he thinks that there were slaves. They just didn't come from Africa. Yeah, I guess like they were just slaves here, uh, but he doesn't go into that and explain it. So, OK, so what's Lee's evidence that this whole slave trade business was all fake? Well, time to dig into some numbers. Quote, it was published that 15 million to 20 million slaves arrived in the Americas between 1540 and 1850 over a 310 year period, according to U.S. history books. The Stuart synopsis points out a few questions that should be examined. One, over a period of 300 years, is it fair to say that 60,000 slaves were transported annually to the Americas, or has the transportation of slaves to the Americas been one big myth? Mm. And honestly, please, I hate this. Please, please don't ask me a question about your conspiracy theory while giving me your conspiracy theory answers. It's just, it takes up too much time. Yeah, here. it's like a one big question you should be asking about the Holocaust is, did it really happen? Like, I, you're, just tell me that you think it didn't happen. Two, the largest seagoing vessel carried 400 slaves, but not all of the ships were that large. This is, uh, by the way, this is something, if you're ever at an academic conference, uh, this is more of a comment than a question. And you should never, ever, ever do that at a Q&A. So big misstep. If you're if we're looking for questions, you better put a question mark at the end of your statement. Three time of passage was three to four months. That means 200 vessels ships per year would have have to travel carrying 300 people. One ship could make three passages per year. The transatlantic slave trade database says there were 1100 to 1400 voyages made over the 300 year period. If that is the case and each ship carried 400 people, the total number would be 560,000 Africans were transported. It still does not add up. Now, I got a I Googled this and in like five minutes, I yeah. figured out it's just totally false. Oh, what? Even come on, even but like ridiculously false. So oh. like even just looking at the transatlantic slave trade database. Yeah. One, they say they have data on 10,000 voyages. <laughs> so that's slightly more than eleven hundred to fourteen hundred. Right. That's off. And they aren't claiming that there were only 10,000 voyages. That's just what they have the data on mm. because history isn't like a game where like what? we have all the documents that are in pristine condition, right? you know, from hundreds of years ago. It's like a lot of guesswork and it's a lot of like finding scraps and bits of stuff. Yeah. There's also a site slave voyages that they have detailed data on 36,000 voyages. Mm. And from what I could see, uh, there was one estimate from the BBC said that there was about 54,000 voyages during this 300 year period. And so let's do some math. OK, so we have 54,000 voyages. Uh, and if we divide that by uh, 1400, uh, we get uh, a little over 38. So that is uh, that's the high number that Lee gives. So Lee gives the high number of 14 hundred voyages there were actually 54,000 voyages so the actual number is 38 times higher than the number that lee gives so if we take 560,000 which is the purported number of slave imports mm -hmm. there should have been or the important number of kidnapped africans there would have been that's 560,000 times 38 gets you around 21 million it's yeah. weird so if we assume these numbers there were actually even more africans kidnapped <laughs> In the slave traits. Come on, Lee. You could do better. You're better than this. I mean, you worked on Wall Street, for God's sakes. Yeah, you, 10 you years. You should know some kind of math here. Yeah, fuck. So we are. We already... Okay, this is number four. Four. We already know that over 83% of all Americans with African ancestry have Native American blood. Uh, I'm going to say that's not true. Yeah, I, I'm going to say, say that too. I'm even going to hedge and say, at the very least, we don't all know that. Yes. You know, I. that's, that's something I had to be taught. 
And number five, did Native American tribes help slaves escape or were Americans with African ancestry already part of the Native American nations? The former. Okay. Next. After 20 years of royal adventure with its 15 ships had transported between 90,000 and 100,000 slaves, that is a long way from 15 million to 20 million slaves who were supposedly brought to the Americas. Doesn't that leave a little over 14 million to 19 million people not accounted for? What's up with that? Um, There were other people doing it. Oh, this is come on now. This is the saddest part of the book so far. Not even because it's incredibly disgustingly racist. Oh, yeah. But just this is the slop somehow sloppy. And this racism. is the sloppiest reasoning in the whole book. Partly because it's actually so clear <laughs> what the argument <laughs> is. And so it's very easy to show. No, this is totally wrong. <laughs> even by your own standards, even by your own sources. This is completely incorrect. And there's also some. So there's something that also may shed some light on um, exactly what's up with that. According to a uh, PBS article written by Henry Louis Gates, Jr., as historian and professor at Harvard University. He yeah. Writes, so a, uh, a Western academic, right, it sounds like. I wonder how many oaths he's yeah. taken. Yeah. Take it at the grain of salt, I guess. Quote, between 1525 and 1866 in the entire history of the slave trade to the New World, According to the Transatlantic Slave Trade Database, 12.5 million Africans were shipped to the New World. 10.7 million survived the dreaded Middle Passage disembarking in North America, the Caribbean, and South America. And how many of those 10.7 million Africans were shipped directly to North America? Only about 388,000. That's right. A tiny percentage. Yeah, and that kind of makes sense because, I mean, the slave trade in the Americas it didn't start with Southern plantations. There wasn't really much plantationing happening yet, yeah. uh, you know, in the 16th century. It was mostly like sugar, right? You know, in the in the Caribbean. So and everyone listening may, may be wondering why is first of all, why is Lee getting so distracted here? I mean, what's you know, where's the usual anti-Semitism, which, again, I'll remind our listeners, um, he says is a made up thing. Well, OK, this chapter isn't yet finished because Lee says, quote, the same thing happened with the Holocaust in Germany during <sighs> World War Two. Six million people were supposedly killed, but there are not that many names referenced who died totaling six million. In fact, the official story has reduced the number to under one million. So, people. so I really wish that <laughs> Lee would have said where this official story came from, because I don't re I didn't realize the NWO changed the number. No. I haven't gotten that memo. No. Also, and I know this is not an analogy that's going to work on Lee since he doesn't think planes hit the Twin Towers, but about 40% of the victims of 9-11 have not been identified. Yeah. Uh, so there are a lot of unidentified victims. Right. So just because there aren't, we haven't identified 6 million uh, victims uh, in the Holocaust, also 6 million is more like the the number of Jewish victims. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not the total number of victims right, of the Holocaust. Because right, it wasn't just Jewish. Yeah. Don't quote me on this. Around eleven, you know. There's, I think that's there's right. Somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, but just because we don't have a name for all those folks doesn't mean there weren't unidentified victims. Right. There almost certainly were. Exactly. The Nazis were not keeping careful records of the Jews they murdered. Let's just put it that way. So Lee counterpunches my PBS article quote further down in this chapter as he addresses the numbers of supposed African slaves that were brought to Mexico and South America. And what and, and what proof does Lee present in arguing with the transatlantic slave trade database? Henry Louis Gates Jr. brings up in the PBS article the very strong. Well, just look at him. Strand of evidence. So that's um, yeah, very powerful. Very powerful. Yeah. OK. Quote, looking at the appearance of modern Mexicans. It becomes clear that the NWO just made up the numbers without any proof of evidence of the veracity of these claims. There is no way 186,766 black skin Mongols could be responsible for the, quote, pigmented side of well over 100 million, quote, light and dark skin mestizos. So, so again, <sighs> his word's wow. not mine. But that's a there's actually, I think, something even more important than the racism here, because I'll be damned. If I will allow Lee to impugn the virility of the Tartarian people, oh. I know for a fact those folks could fuck enough to make a <laughs> hundred million folks. That's right. Starting with one hundred eighty six hundred seven hundred and sixty six thousand <laughs> folks. I know they can do it. And I they can do it. This is I have you know, this is to me. Low, he's got low T. 
Lee, Lee's yeah. got low T, and so he's got to impugn the very, very high T Tartarians. Uh, okay, so Lee also wants us to know that, quote, the American Negro or Indian or Black Moor or Mongolian Tartarian is the oldest man on Earth. Yeah, there's just one. Yep, just one. Just guy. one of them. <laughs> also, the Old Testament, the Bible takes place in the Americas because, mm. quote, the Old Testament contains volcanoes, corn, bears and tobacco, all which are native to America. Uh, I have my bachelor's of science degree in environmental science. I've taken a lot of geology classes and I'm not an expert on volcanology, but I'm pretty sure volcanoes are not only native to America, but I, I mean, there's uh, probably other places. I'm going to need a citation on this. Um, yeah. And it seems pretty easy to show that toba- tobacco is not in the Old Testament of the Bible, just right. period. Um, I was very curious about that. No bears um, in China either. I don't know if you knew that. None. Uh, no, absolutely not. Uh, right. Bears are only in America and corn also <laughs> native to the Americas. But uh, yeah, but the, the thing with corn, though, is that corn. I the word corn might be in the Bible, but corn meant something different. It was just a word for all grains. Right. Uh, they weren't talking about what we today call corn. Okay, so the Great Salt Lake is the Dead Sea, just as the Mississippi River is the Euphrates River. So just yep, so like you need like a reference here to make sure and keep all this right. I am really enjoying this chapter on Tartarian culture. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanna, I just wanna remind everyone that this is what this chapter is about. Oh, yeah, you get kind of lost here. Uh, he feels so strongly about there being more pyramids and megalithic structures in the Americas than anywhere else in the world that he says it twice. So oh, yeah, just more standard. repetition. Yeah. Good to see the Toltecs, Mayans and Aztecs were all black Moors. I mean, you know, obviously, yeah, yeah we know, we that. know, yeah, we know this. You can't just blow by that and move on. And, and, and I don't think we can fully appreciate any of this without one really problematic quote of millions to come, I'm sure. To set up this quote, Lee is talking about these massive Olmec heads structured from basalt that he states, quote, range in height uh, from 1.17 to 3.4 meters and weigh about 6 to, f- to 50 tons. And uh, for further so. reference on these heads, uh, one of them is shown mm-hmm. in the final episode of season two of The Simpsons. Oh, cool. When Mr. Burns gives it to The Simpsons as a gift. So on with the quote here. The heads are a distinctive feature of the Olmec civilization of ancient Mesoamerica. All portray mature individuals with fleshy cheeks, flat noses, and slightly crossed eyes. Their physical characteristics correspond to a type that is still common among the inhabitants of Tabasco and Veracruz. Yep, so, all art is realistic. Okay, we couldn't, you know, we thought we were getting kind of peak racism here, but no, you're wrong, guys. So prepare yourself. On with the quote here. The NWO tells the story backwards. The Negro is the Indian or copper colored indigenous people of the Americas, uh, who is actually a redskin. Many think black people are black, yet there are many shades of copper, which is the color of earth. If you look in old dictionaries, you will see that uh, the N word, which he spells out, and Indian were synonyms and that colored is simply short for copper colored. Why do you think they keep changing or titles from India to Negro to colored to African American? The black Moor Negro is the most copied man on earth. Wow. Oh God. Okay, well, uh, let's try to lighten things up here with a bit more sports talk. So, okay, here we go. Lee still describing these massive headstones, writes, quote, They all display distinctive headgear, and one theory is that these were worn as protective helmets, maybe worn for war or to take part in a ceremonial Mesoamerican ball game. But and, and, and these ancient Mesoamerican athletes experience even less brain trauma than modern day NFL players. Hey, I'm sure. that's but good. That's, that's positive. Yeah, they were advanced after all. And finally, we end this chapter with what you'd expect. Lee bashes modern day fashion. Quote, the Tartarians were, quote, natty dressers and harbor dashers. Even outings to the beach included suits and hats. Everyone wore hats, even the children. A far cry from the sweatsuit crowd of today. Yeah, well, I might <laughs> wear from sweat Vegas, suits, I'll say yes. But at least I'm not a moron. And with that, <laughs> we have come to the end of our second episode <sighs> on the Lost Kingdom of Tartaria. And with that, we, we are done. Done. Ooh. 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 Too much
racism. Thank you for listening to this episode of None that's, Dare Call It Ordinary. That was rough. If you would also so like to hear our weekly man, bonus episodes, hour. just become a $5 a month patron over at patreon.com slash none dare call it ordinary. That is also where you'll find any blog posts, pictures, and news updates to go along with our regular series. And you don't even have to be a patron to get access to all that fun stuff. You can also reach us by email at none dare call it ordinary at gmail.com. Lastly, we ask for you to please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever your podcasts are served. 